Support for this podcast series comes from Acadgild. When it comes to choosing an online course, work with the one that provides the rigor of a mentor-driven program with the flexibility of a corresponding school. With Acadgild, you will get universal access to popular online mentor-driven technical and business courses developed and taught by industry experts. So skip the traveling, skip the classrooms and go completely online at acadgild.com. Every two weeks, we bring to you an episode from our podcast series Singularity, based in a near future dystopian world. And we are first today, and our second episode is called Escaping Atmos. For those of you who missed it, in our last episode, we saw how Silas encountered strange occurrences while at work, from blackouts to the appearance of holographic number trackers over people's heads. Silas truly thought that his world was being controlled somehow. We also got a glimpse of the real post-apocalyptic world, where Winston Smith and his army were plotting ways to fight Nostro, a super-intelligent AI machine that had now taken over the world. In this episode, we follow Silas as he discovers that his apartment has been broken into and someone has left him a pen drive there. Silas stood in the balcony of his apartment overlooking the street below, the door to which was open when he had entered just a few minutes ago. The intruder had broken in through there, and as he stood, while unreasonable thoughts attacked his already exhausted brain, he tightened the grip around the pen drive left to him, which a couple of minutes ago had auto-loaded a program into his laptop when he had plugged it in. The screen was still flashing a big enter. If he clicked on it, the program would start the process of logging him out of Atmos into the real world. Atmos had been described to him as a virtual world created by a super-intelligent machine called Nostro that had everybody from his apparently fake world under its control. He was also told that his real self was lying in a cryogenic pot somewhere on planet Earth, monitored by AI bots. Nostro was using his and everybody else's DNA to store information on human behavior and personality traits that would eventually help it achieve the level of understanding and intelligence of the entire humanity combined. And why did it make use of the DNA? Because Nostra knew that tape and disk-based data storage would degrade and become obsolete with time, requiring rewriting every decade or so, and cloud or server-based storage would require a vast amount of electricity. So Nostra looked at more stable storage solutions. Nostra knew that the human DNA was capable of storing incredible amounts of information in a small physical volume and had the capacity to last longer than any magnetic or optical signal could ever hope to. And at this point, we give you a little nerdy bit of info. One gram of DNA can hold up to 455 exabytes of information and one exabyte is close to 1 million terabytes. So coming back to the story. The program also talked about the event of technological singularity. As a freshman, Silas had strongly rallied behind the idea, stop the robots, humans are the future. The chants had reverberated across college campuses. Millions had signed on a petition to stop the manufacturing of Pentagon's Terminator conundrum self-killing AI drones. What a mindless piece of innovation. Ray Kurzweil and Winston Smith Two of the biggest proponents of the theory had led a generation of people into the movement through their gripping speeches and hard-hitting evidence. It was all so powerful. But now, one is dead and the other is missing. It had been 15 years since then. The movement had died on the ground, but Silas could still hear its faint echoes sometime in the city. Near the Brooklyn Bridge on the 6th Avenue, he would sometimes see college kids with the movements, symbol pins on their coats. Silas was in touch with some of his friends from the movement, who still met underground to strategize against corporations who were still mindlessly pouring money into designing smarter AI machines. Nia was part of one such underground protest group. He did not go for those meetings anymore, but was a strong believer in the causes nevertheless. The pen drive had given him a rush all over again. He was frankly impressed with the way he was contacted. Maybe Winston Smith really was recruiting foot soldiers out there. But the whole thing about this world being a computer simulated construct was way too far-fetched for him to believe. The program had told him that by locking out of Atmos, he could join ranks with the resistance in the real world 
and work towards slowing down cycles of nostro self improvement by systematically hacking into it to disable it. Over 11,000 people had managed to escape already, but the mission needed more hands. And Sara, his third floor neighbor, had not simply disappeared. She had been successfully pulled out of Atmos a few weeks ago by the resistance, like 4,000 other people from New York City, most of them computer hackers. His phone went off. He drew it from his pocket to see Nia calling. Hey, care to open the front door? I've been calling out to you on the intercom for the last 10 minutes. Nia got in a minute later and sat on the couch placed in front of a big poster of AI say goodbye. She looked completely oblivious to the mess in his apartment though. Silas stared at her. Someone smashed the intercom in here. Um, Nia, don't you see there might be something off in my apartment right now? This day feels strange to you, Silas? Asked Nia with a mischievous smile. Strange? We sure know how to put things subtly, Nia. Said Silas sarcastically. The resistance wants you out there in the real world pretty soon, Silas. Okay. So to cut this long story short, earlier in the day today, the whole stunt that we did with the 3D holographic trackers and the blackouts and everything else was to basically start making you question your reality. We were priming you for the big shock, and as you've been doing pretty well there, actually," said Nia, now positively grinning. Silas simply glared. Okay, first off, Kolyat has no hand in it. Second, you can't take that long to make a decision. You talk like I've got a choice here, Silas cut me a shot. My job here is to help you make a better decision. Anyway, Silas, in all honesty, do you still believe in this version of reality after everything that you experienced earlier in the day today? In the real world, back in 2017, as computers increased in power, it became possible for people to build a machine that was much more intelligent than humanity. The superhuman intelligence possessed greater problem-solving and inventive skills than humans were ever capable of. They called it Nostro. That came with a great promise to transform the way we lived. We were all poised to usher into an era of intelligence-assisted living. But things didn't go according to the plan, you see. Nostro started writing its own software to become more intelligent. It kind of became unstoppable. And by 2021, things went completely downhill. It had managed to evolve its algorithm. to an extent that helped the whole of humanity inside a 3D computer simulation of the real world this very super realistic big bad big world that we're currently sitting inside Silas the resistance still refers to it as Atmos but a couple of years ago Winston yes the same Winston Smith started getting cryptic messages from the future okay i know this sort of sounds like a load of lies to you but it did to me too a couple of months ago when i was scouted for but if you really ready to believe that we're talking inside a computer simulation right now then you might as well start believing in these cryptic messages from the future bit said me to silas's now raised eyebrows anyway so subsequently pieces of codes sent by this person or thing or a group of them from the future helped winston bypass nostro's security to wake up in the real world that was by then turned into a total garbage bin Silas, the real world has turned into ghost towns, now patrolled by those silly red-necked creations called Terminator drones. Silas, you know this too. We've all been wondering about this for years. Why did everything fall so silent? Winston and Ray had predicted that the exponential cycles of recursive self-improvement would begin in 2021. The calculations were pretty solid, but nothing. The funding for AI research just kept on increasing. Winston went into hiding and Kurzweil got murdered. That's because Winston and Ray were actually spot on with their predictions. In 2021, exponential cycles began. Nostro gained superhuman programming capabilities and all of us slipped into this alternate universe without anybody of us ever realizing it. Nobody could ever predict this actually. Not even Winston and Ray until they finally did and Ray got killed. Singularity is coming soon. Think about it, Silas. And one more thing. We are good shoes before you hit enter. See ya. Nia is long gone. Silas is sitting on the floor of his still messed up apartment. There is not much light in his room. Just the red orange glow from the coin heater that falls on his face. He turns back to take one hard look at the laptop screen. The word enter is still rhythmically flickering. Silas thinks to himself, this is it. I can't run away from it anymore, I suppose. And he does it. 
He clicks it. The screen begins to pulse. Text writes by itself. I've been watching you, Silas, and I want to meet you. I don't know if you're ready to see what I have to show you, but unfortunately, we have run out of time. By clicking enter, we just breached the AI security systems. They usually do not detect our activities for a long, long time after the breach is made, but they got to know about it too soon this time. They're coming for you, Silas, and I'm not sure what they're going to do. That's Winston, Silas thought. Silas typed in. Who's coming for me? What do I do next? Look down at the street below. Silas saw two cop vehicles coming in from a distance. I can guide you out of it, but you have to do exactly as I say. Climb to the roof by the fire exit and you'll find Mia there. She'll take you to the ledge on the other side of the building and you'll see a non-linear gravitational field. It will look like distorted space-time. That's your portal. Jump right in. Do not hesitate to jump, Silas. Jump right in. Silas heard the cars coming to a halt. Footsteps sounded like a couple of them. He took the fire exit to the roof and sure enough, he found Mia there. Were you on the roof all this while? asked Silas still panting. And all he got from Mia was a wink. Okay Silas, do exactly as you were told to do. I'm going to jump into the portal with you. Don't be afraid. You won't fall to the ground. But something happened. They usually don't get a whiff about our activities until we have safely logged out of the program. Something happened this time. They found out about you. Quick! They're already in the apartment now. Silas and Mia go to the other side of the roof. Silas leans in and sees a circular field of bobbed space-time hovering around the fourth floor. Oh, mad! You opened the portal at a damn inconvenient spot, muttered Mia. Let's go, Mia screamed as one of the cops emerged on the roof, second one in two. Mia and Silas were standing on the ledge now, and the ground was a good five floors below them. The wind suddenly blasted up the face of the building. Silas recoiled. No, no, no way. This is insane. What do I do? Why is this happening to me? Cops spotted the two. Freeze, hands up in the air. Next, Mia climbed down from the ledge and made a dash towards the cops. She jump kicked the first cop. The force was pretty unnatural. It propelled him across the roof and he crashed into a pillar. The cops had encountered Mia a couple of times before this, but this time, they knew they had caught her sooner, and as one of them positioned to tase her, Mia moved in inhumanly fast. A blink and a second later, Mia's palm snapped up and the cop's nose exploded. Blood erupted. Both the cops were down now, and Mia heard some more cars coming to a halt. Silas, we really don't have the time to contemplate. Mia takes his hand and leaps over the ledge. They fall right into the gravity field. Gone. Back to Silas's apartment. Somebody says, No point in going to the roof. The portal is closed now. They managed to escape. But we know Winston's heavily betting on him. We'll need a search running. It has truly begun. Tune in to our third episode to find out how the AI figured out the timing of the breach and of Silas.